In the last lecture we discussed about the two types of approaches, how do we do the dynamic analysis. Now we will say that there are two basic types of loading where you can do a dynamic analysis. One is what we call as a periodic loading. The other one is non periodic loading. In the earlier class, we said there are two approaches deterministic and non deterministic approach. <coughs> the deterministic approach will give you the time history of the responses, you can also find out the stresses and displacements, etcetera, as a derived quantity, whereas in non deterministic, you will get the statistical responses, you will not be able to derive them you have got to do them independently. Periodic loading is that which has the same variation for large number of cycles. Whereas, non periodic loading is that which is for a short duration and creates what we call impulse loads. Now, let us see what are those essential characteristics or essential features of dynamic analysis. One, the loading should be time variant. it should produce inertia forces which is significant. <coughs> and we all know inertia force is mass into acceleration, if you take x as the displacement the double derivative of that will be the acceleration. Now, for example, If the displacement of the system is very low, if the displacement of the system is very low and is unable to produce inertia force significantly, even though the loading is time variant. we do not do dynamic analysis. We can perform dynamic analysis only when both these conditions are satisfied. Load should be time variant and the load should produce significant inertia forces. Inertia force of course, depends on two parameters, one is the mass, other is the acceleration. We all know for offshore structural system, mass is generally very large. So, the question does not arise that it will not cause an inertia force at all because of the lesser mass. But there is a possibility that the displacement can be very small. I can give an example. If the structure is bottom supported, it can have a very less displacement, therefore, the inertia force can be lower. But this statement does not tell you that for bottom supported structures like jacket structures do not perform dynamic analysis, because this is qualitative, this is subjective. We simply say if the inertia force is lesser, insignificant, do not do dynamic analysis, but what is your quantification? 
that is not specified. Okay. However, if the structure imposes a very large displacement, you have to do a dynamic analysis. Now, that is the contraspective of the problem. So, there is no question of not doing a dynamic analysis for a compliant structure at all, but you can do a quasi static analysis for a fixed structure. Okay. That is the contraspective of the issue. Therefore, when bottom founded structures or supported structures were installed initially in 1930s, people did not bother about dynamic analysis to a large extent as it is been talk of the day, because now those structures are totally obsolete. We do not have any bottom supported structures meant for oil exploration production, what is generally called as ENP. ENP is exploration and production. We do not have any structures which is bottom supported as on today, they do not, they are not actually used at all. Okay. It is totally obsolete about 40 years back. So, there is no research innovation happening in that side. So, if these two are the characteristics which govern the necessity of performing a dynamic analysis, let us talk about the form where one of these two parameters govern. For example, water may be the form of the structure, may be fixed type, may be compliant type, may be floating type. Water may be the structural form, water may be the assembly of members, water may be the diameter of the members, cross section, thickness etcetera. Load is independent of the form, because you have no control on what kind of load should be applied to the structure. We saw yesterday a list of forces these forces are not dependent on what kind of structure or the form it is. Of course, certain forms generate forces because of the compliance action. However, force is not dependent on the form, but the condition of inertia force being larger or insignificant depends on the mass. Therefore, mass should be quantified for a given form. Now, it is very interesting for all of to understand mass in general is present continuously for the entire length of the member. Okay. Now, you look at the complexity in the dynamic analysis. Mass is a function of mass becomes a function of the length of the member, it is continuously present for the entire length of the member and force is a function of space and time. Time of course, dynamic, space of course, in aerodynamic or wind forces depending upon the height, the z value which we saw in the last lecture, the z naught value from the mean terrain quantifies the wind force. So, space variation is also there. Now, you cannot do a problem where both are connected. If it is so, you can only do the equation of motion in a partial differential form, because both of them are interconnected. As I said, force depending upon the type of the system can also generate, for example, vortex induced vibration. So, they can be connected. When they are connected, when the mass is continuously distributed, the problem of definition for solving dynamic analysis becomes in a partial differential equation mode. We all know that when there are two variables, if you want to hold down one variable with respect to the other, you have to do a partial differential equation. And we all know that considering the differential equation, PDEs have more complexities in solution procedures, because we know for a given ordinary differential equation, we have got two sets of variables and answers. One is what we call as the complementary function, other is called as a particular integral part, whereas in partial differential equation, the complexity is further large. So, people thought to make it simple, one of them should be made more simpler than what we see here. So, they do not want to test the force, because force is considered to be variation of time variation in terms of space is not accounted. Force variation in terms of space, for example, I have a 
cylindrical member this is my mean water level you may ask me a question sir when force variation is put to space that is along the depth is not counted how do we encounter for this we already know that the force variation becomes nonlinear and the variation of the force in terms of water particle kinematics that is velocity and acceleration of the water particle is given by the respective theories for example, Aries theory Stokes will give you the variation of water particle acceleration and velocity in horizontal and vertical direction varying along the depth. So, the space variation is taken care of by some other form. The variation of the force in terms of time is taken care of by me in dynamic analysis. So, we do not touch the force. Now, the second point of discussion could be if the mass is considered to be varying along the length, I have got to do something for this. This is what we call as discretization of mass. So, I discretize mass at specific points. We call this as lump. So, I lump the mass at specific points. Now, the question comes there are various engineers doing dynamic analysis, one can lump the mass at 5 points, one can lump the mass at 10 points, one can lump the mass thinking that the results will be more accurate, let me lump at 100 points and one can say sir no lumping, I want to do a continuous variation, I will get more accurate results. So, there is a diversification in the interest of dynamic analysis. So, to answer this, the question asked indirectly is where should we lump the mass? The first question answered was why should we lump the mass? If we keep the mass continuous, the problem will become partial differential equation. It is complex to handle, therefore, we do not want to handle that. So, therefore, I am lumping the mass. This procedure of continuum mass system to lump mass system is called mass discretization. We discretize the mass at different points. Now, where are these points? How many points can be taken and why? To answer this, let us come back to the fundamental back again. We are not interested in the mass. We are interested in the product of mass and the inertia that is mass and the acceleration of the mass. So, wherever I want to measure the inertia forces, I will lump the mass there. Wherever I want to know the displacements, I will lump the mass there. So, now the question comes in a given tower or in a given column like this, which is fixed at the bottom, which is free at the top. We all know from mechanics that the displacement at the bottom, which is fixed here, is practically 0. So, one would not like to lump the mass at this point where there is no displacement because this term will become insignificant. If you really wanted to know the maximum effect of inertia in the system, you would love to lump the mass at the point where the displacement is maximum. So, given form, given boundary condition, you automatically emerge in situations where mass can be lumped. If I have a system like this, So, simple template structure, these are called nodes, 
they can be also called as joints. So, one can interestingly think of an idealized model of this as a simple stick model where correspondingly of course, this is the point where the center of gravity is focused on the top side let us say. So, pick up these points and lump the mass at these points. So, we are lumping the points at discrete points along the member or along the structure where we are interested to measure the displacement or the responses. Okay. So, this tells me how many degrees of freedom the system actually has. Now, there is a small confusion here. Is degree of freedom defined as the number of points of mass lumping? or something else. Okay, the answer is it does not depend on how many points the mass is lumped. It depends on something different then what is degree of freedom? Degree of freedom is explained as is explained as or defined as the number of independent displacement components of a structural system that is necessary to quantify. the inertia forces present to this. So, these are the catch words. The mass should be lumped at the point where inertia force can be measured and they should be independent. So, here the focus is not the number of points where mass is lumped. Here the focus is the number of points or the coordinates where displacement is measured. Okay. So, this is nothing to do with the number of points where mass is concentrated, but unfortunately or hypothetically these two statements are actually linked, because it is only those number of points where inertia force will be significant. Therefore, one can blindly say generally degree of freedom will be the number of points where the mass is lumped. For example, the structure has about 5 degrees of freedom, but you can also have a structure with one mass I lump the mass at this point lump the mass at one point, but allow the mass to have acceleration in all 6 degrees of freedom. So, one lumped point 6 degrees of freedom. 6 lumped points each one has 1 degree of freedom again 5 and so on and so forth. So, please do not confuse that the number of points where the mass is lumped will tell me what is the degree of freedom, because here is the definition which proves this to be wrong. We can have 1 point where the mass is lumped, but still you can have 6 degrees of freedom for this. So, it is therefore, not valid the correct statement could be independent displacement coordinates or components, which will quantify or which will help me to quantify the inertia forces.
present in that system. I should be able to capture the inertia force in the system with the help of these independent coordinates. What may be the number that would be the degree of freedom. So, expressed as DOF degree of freedom with hyphens in between that is the classical way of writing degree of freedom. Now, the question comes generally how many degrees of freedom a structural member or a system in offshore has. Okay. Generally, because if you talk of beam element there can be 4 degrees of freedom, there can be 6 degrees of freedom, there can be 12 degrees of freedom depending upon you do 2D, you do 3D analysis, you ignore axial deformation, you add axial deformation. There are many confusions in mechanics whereas, in offshore structural system these are all converged to a single easy definition how many degrees of freedom a system can easily have. Let us see how many degrees and how are they different. So, let us say we have three axes this is x axis, this is y axis, this is z axis. Let us say it is an origin. This origin can be anywhere in the platform. Let us say I have a TLP, this is a superstructure, these are called as column members. this is called as a pontoon member. Of course, you have superstructure where you have got crane derricks, you can have living quarters, you can have a heli deck etcetera. This has got to be anchored with set of teethers to the sea floor and that is my mean sea level, this is my wave direction, these are teethers. of course, this is a sea bed and therefore, this is what we call as small d which indicates water depth and this is what we call as capital D which indicates diameter of the member essentially the outer diameter. Now, I can place this origin anywhere I want it can be the center of gravity of the top side, let us say it is somewhere here. One can calculate the center of gravity of the mass center depending upon how the mass is distributed. Okay. One can easily calculate this as easy mathematics available, you can make a spreadsheet in excel, you can easily find out with reference to MSL or with reference to seabed where is my CG located for the given mass distribution, it is very easy to find out. So, let us say this is the point where the mass is concentrated for the entire superstructure. I can locate this origin here, I can locate this origin anywhere in the center of this column, anywhere I want, on the top, on the bottom, anywhere I want. So, the botheration of locating the origin in the analysis is not important. The importance is at this point the entire mass is said to be concentrated, therefore, it is unique and simple and easy to locate this origin in the same point where the center of gravity is situated. So, the entire mass is said to be concentrated. So, let us say this is the point. Now, this has got three axes of motion x axis, y and z axis. Therefore, there can be displacement along x, along y and along z. There can be rotation about x, about y and about z. So, the displacement along x is, is called the surge degree, the displacement along y is called the sway degree displacement along z is called the heave degree, heave displacement. You can easily remember this because y will coincide with y, it is called sway, this is surge and heave. These are technical names given for displacement along x, y and z respectively. Now, I want to mark the direction of rotational displacements. Okay, I use right hand rule, I put my thumb towards the arrow direction, remaining four fingers will show me a direction. So, I am marking it. Similarly, this way, 
similarly this way I am marking it. So, this becomes rotation about x axis I call this as roll, rotation about y axis I call this as pitch, rotation about z axis I call this as yaw. So, there are 6 degrees of freedom for the system. Why they are called degrees of freedom? Because they are independent displacement coordinates in a given system which can help me to identify the inertia force in the respective displacement coordinates and they are independent. Though the mass is at only one point, but there are 6 degrees of freedom. Therefore, degree of freedom is nothing to do with the number of points where the mass is concentrated. Degree of freedom is classically defined as the independent displacement coordinates which will help me to assess, to capture, to understand, to quantify the inertia force present in the system. Obviously, the inertia force will be generated by the external force acting on the system because inertia is a product of mass into acceleration. The system does not move, does not accelerate, there is no inertia force. Okay. So, degree of freedom is classically defined and explained in offshore structures. So, maximum we have 6 degrees of freedom. What does it mean is your metric size in your dynamic analysis will never ever exceed 6 by 6. Whereas, in other buildings or any other structure like bridges etcetera, it can go very high. So, people use condensation procedure, people use banded with matrix procedure etcetera to make it simple, but in this case it will not more go more than 6 by 6, worst by worst 9 by 9. We will talk about slightly later in the next lecture, but let us say my analysis is in a close form and can be easily handled with the known mathematics. So, having said this, Now, I want to know that we have agreed upon two cases, one the loading will be periodic or it is time varying, the system will have a significant mass because system will produce significant inertia force, therefore I will do dynamic analysis. Then the question comes what are the essential characteristics of a mathematical model through which I can do dynamic analysis. Ideally speaking a single degree freedom system model D O F stands for degree of freedom single stands for one degree of freedom, one degree of freedom in sense there is only one displacement coordinate and obviously indirectly we also understand in our internal mind there is only one mass. To start with the most simple ideal mathematical model to do dynamic analysis single degree freedom system. Now, one can have a doubt in mind when offshore platforms do have 6 degree freedom why are we starting our discussion with single degree. If you know the procedure and basics and fundamentals and dynamics based on single degree you can always apply this to infinite degree freedom because the procedure is same, but unfortunately which is a fact I am telling openly in the class 99 percent of the classroom teaching unfortunately stops at single degree. Okay, they think that single degree is all enough. We will take the lectures to 9 by 9 degree of freedom. I will tell you how to derive a stiffness matrix, mass matrix for a given offshore platform. We will solve it here in the blackboard using calculator. So, I will, dis, I, will, I will demonstrate to you how dynamic analysis can be done using a simple calculator in the class. Okay. So, essentially we will understand first single degree, then we will move on further. The moment is a single degree, we only have one thing in mind, there is only one displacement coordinate and we also indirectly have in mind that there is only one mass point. But what are the essential characteristics that must be present in a single degree? Ideally speaking, a single degree freedom system model mathematically looks like this. There is one mass, 
there is one spring, there is one dash pot and there is one coordinate system where the displacement is measured and the force is applied in one point. So, it has got one mass capital M, it has got one spring whose stiffness is K, it has got one dash pot whose damping is C. We will talk about all these things now quickly. This is an idealized single degree mathematical model. So, the mathematical model should have four components. Obviously, the four components are f of t, m, k and c. Of course, this is not a component, this is a displacement. I am marking the displacement from the CG of the mass. You can also mark the displacement from the front end of the mass, I can mark it from back end of the mass, anywhere I want, but I am taking the CG of the mass because it is ideal to understand at the CG the mass is said to be concentrated. The foremost content of this will be the presence of mass indicated by m, which is an indication of inertia force. Now, imagine there is a mass which is allowed to move only in one direction, maybe to or fro or forth and back because it cannot move vertical, there is a wheel here. It cannot move lateral because it is going to move within a channel, let us say. So, it is going to move only in one direction, but as you keep on moving, the body will be keep on moving, right. The body has to restore its original position, okay. it has to vibrate. If it does not vibrate, there is no displacement generated. right? Now, I want to bring the body back or the mass back to its original position. So, I should have restoration force which is given by the stiffness of the spring. So, this will give me restoration force. Which is offered by the spring. Imagine the spring does not exist. The mass will not restore its position back. It will be keep on moving in the direction as the force is pulling the mass. Therefore, we do not have any such structural system in offshore where the mass can move wherever it has to move, the mass has to stay at a place, platform has to stay because we need to do exploration and production, mass has to remain at a place. So, we need some mechanism by which though the force will pull or push the mass, the mass should restore its position to some extent. So, restoration is essential which comes from the stiffness of the member what we call as K. I indicate this as stiffness of the spring. Mass is indicated in kg that is in system international. Stiffness indicated in Newton per meter, force per unit displacement is stiffness. So, Newton per meter. The third content is mass resting on the surface this is a wheel let us say, but still the mass will move because the force is very large the mass will move, but there will be an opposing force to the mass which will restrain the mass to move that can be a frictional force also. So, there can be some dissipating force which will prevent the mass to move, it can be also offered by the air, air can resist the mass should not move, there can be friction between the surface of the mass and the surface of the platform here which will not allow the mass to move. So, there is some mechanism by which the mass will be stopped. So, that is a dissipating force which is offered by C which is called as the damping force damping coefficient which is given in Newton per meter per second. So, Newton second meter that is the unit. Let us say I have a system where mass is present, spring constant is available, dash pot is also available which offers me some resistance, but there is no force. So, the mass is static, it is not moving at all. So, when the mass does not move, x of t is not activated, x of t not activated, x double dot t does not come, 
therefore no inertia force no dynamic analysis. So, the fourth component is the external force which essentially should remain as function of time because time variant is an important character in the dynamic loading. It can be periodic, it can be non periodic, it can be prescribed, it can be non prescribed. The procedure can be deterministic, it can be non deterministic, but it has to be remaining as a function of time. Any one which is function of time will become continuous derivative if you differentiate the response with respect to time. On the other hand, if x of t is the displacement, then dx by dt should give me x dot and dx dot by dt should give me x double dot all are continuous. Okay. So, in this case the, de, the function is differentiated with respect to time. So, the whole story is happening in the time series. Okay. Now, it has become very simple when you idealize this as a lumped mass system which is discretized at the point where the mass is concentrated. Imagine the mass is present all over the media along the length, along the height and along the volume continuously. So, mass itself is dependent on x, y, z parameters and every x, y, z you have got 6 degrees of freedom. So, you can have an infinite number of complications in the analysis. So, to control this people said let us lump the mass only one point, let us assume the mass moves only at 1 degree of freedom, then let us see what would be the dynamic response analysis of such systems. Suppose if you have a question in mind that is single degree freedom system is highly idealized, is it not practical? I mean can we name a single degree freedom system, can we show, can we see, can we draw a single degree which is existing. because if it does not exist, it becomes totally hypothetical, we should not study that. For understanding sake, we can study, but as I told you 99 percent dynamics is concentrated on single degree. People explain all concepts in all research papers essentially with single degree first and then extrapolate to multi degrees it is not vice versa. People explain with multi degree then try to make you to understand single degree. No, single degree is the alphabetic level A, multi degree can be Z. Okay. So, that is the order, but people do not have energy to carry from A to Z therefore, they stop basically at B or C and say that is all dynamics about. Okay. So, how does it practically relate to the understanding? So, characteristics of mathematical model of a single degree should essentially contain the four components without which the model is not complete. Okay. There are four essential types of single degree which is idealized in the literature. There are four types, let us see what are they. Let us say for the completion sake I will draw the same figure slightly in a different model because I have drawn that on horizontal plane I can draw it in a vertical plane also. Okay. Let us say in this case the support is horizontal which is normal to the board can always make the supporter at the board itself. So, I am drawing it like this similarly the same figure I am redrawing with this. So, this is my mass, this is my stiffness, this is my dashboard, this is my x of sorry, let us make it as y of t and this is my f of t, this is what we call as spring mass system, spring mass dashboard system, this is called as a dashboard. There is a very interesting meaning of this symbol. Let us enlarge this.
imagine there is a fluid present inside. This is connected to a body, <coughs> this is further connected to another body. So, let us say this is moving and this is static, does not move. So, out of the two components, you connect one to static or one to fixed, let one move. So, as I move this, this portion will start moving and there is a limit beyond which this cannot move because there is a control mechanism inside. Once I move and release the force, this body will move back or move up, it will go and hit, the body should not go here and touch, therefore this will prevent the motion of it. So, this keeps on moving, that is what is called dash pot, it keeps on dashing and there is a pot which does this. The ideal example of this is nothing but a simple two stroke or four stroke engine in an automobile, that is how it works. This is connected to the crank this is connected to the wheel, as the wheel moves the crank operates and therefore, this controls the wall, fuel is pumped in, the vehicle moves forward. It is the same idea here, but here we use fluid as a damping media. Suppose, I do not have a fluid here, there will be keep on ringing, this will get damaged, okay. the energy should be absorbed. right? So, this body or this space will absorb energy and they will dissipate the energy. Why it is dissipating? friction will stop the motion. So, it is arresting the motion, therefore, it has to dissipate the energy of the force, therefore, it is dissipating force. Okay. That is the dashboard, so it is a spring mass system. The second could be a torsional pendulum, This is called a torsional pendulum. Where the degree of freedom is the rotation. The third can be where I subtend the mass at one end. I subtend a spring at the other end and pull the mass. <coughs> so, that is the stiffness and it is a simple cable which runs through this and of course, this is can be YFT, not XFT, let us say YFT. So, it moves only in vertical direction. You may ask me a question sir, there are two moments here, one is this mass moving and of course, if this uh, pulley also has a mass, this will also rotate, let us say this theta. So, there are two degrees here, one is the mass of the pulley which is focused here, which is having theta of t. The other is m which is moving vertical which is having y of t. How we can say it is single degree? Interestingly look back the definition, degree of freedom is number of independent displacement coordinates. Now, in this equation I can connect theta and y easily, sin theta t will be equal to y of t. So, they are not independent, either you measure y of t or you measure theta of t. If you know one you can find the other if you know the radius of this building, is it not? So, I want independent displacement coordinates. So, in this case independent is only 1, either theta or y. That is the third example. The fourth one could be the primary mass and the secondary mass. Sitting on set of springs or series of springs. Now again, this can have a motion of x1 of t, this can have a motion of x2 of t, one can say there are two mass sir, there are two displacements, is it double degree of freedom or two degree of freedom? No, the answer is only single degree of freedom provided we are not 
considering the mass m 1 to move, we only consider mass m 2 to move therefore, there is only 1 degree that is one example or one definition. If both of them are moving we are looking for a relative displacement between these two. So, x 1 minus x 2 of t ok we are looking for because if I know one I can find the other provided I know the stiffness of the springs ok. Therefore, independently only one will be there that is x 1 minus x 2 of t whichever is higher. So, these are the four ideal single degree freedom system models mathematically available in the literature which will help us to understand the dynamic analysis of an idealized single degree of freedom system model. So, you can always make or assume a mathematical model of any platform any structure as one of these four. So, if a platform is idealized as any one of these four we call them as assumption or limitation in the study. I am assuming the model to remain as single degree freedom system as a spring mass system. Then do analysis for this and apply this to the structure. It is valid, it is mathematically acceptable and researchers keep on doing like this. As you understand this then you want to move on a higher stages let us say I do not want only one mass there are n number of places where I want to measure the inertia forces. There are n degrees of freedom therefore, I want to do dynamic analysis with n by n matrix yes we can do that ok. Let us first understand this. So, in this lecture we summarize that what are the essential characteristics of a single degree of freedom system, what are the important components, what are the ideal examples of single degree freedom system, why they are single degree still there are two movements because we are talking about independent coordinates. We also discuss what is periodic and non periodic loading and why at all we do not want a mass to remain continuously present in the structure because then it becomes partially differentiable the complexity is higher we want to lump them. Once we agree to lump them where to lump them? We want to lump them at the points where I want to measure the displacement because I am interested in inertia forces and inertia force a product of mass and acceleration. So, acceleration is a derivative of displacement in a time domain as we saw there that is how it is explained. Therefore, in the next lecture we will talk about different conditions of single degree freedom system model and how equation of motion can be written for this by different methods. We will see that in the next lecture then we will start solving the equation of motion for different applications. Then we will take up 2 degree, multi degree etcetera and see how I can solve the problem.